Gustav Klimt was born in 1862 near Vienna in Austria. He was the second of seven children, three boys and four girls. His family was quite poor. His brothers as well as both of his parents were artistic. His mother was musically artistic and his father was an engraver and carver. Between 1876 and 1883, Klimt attended the Vienna Kunstgewerbeschule, a school of applied arts and crafts. Klimt participated in a new artistic movement called Art Nouveau. This type of art aimed to communicate the feelings of the artist and called attention to the process of art. The project we will be doing today takes an idea from Klimt's painting in 1918 called Baby. Notice the child resting under a quilt of patterns and colors. Just as Klimt captured that beautiful child under a pile of quilts, you too will have an opportunity now to create your own self-portrait with you under a pile of quilts. Go ahead and get out your brown piece of paper to cover your work surface, a pencil, and a piece of watercolored paper. It's going to be portrait orientation. Turn it over and write your full name and your in-person teacher, please. Today's project, we're going to start by drawing a head up towards the top, whether in the center, a little off center, whether you want your head tilted or maybe hidden under a little bit of covers. Let's go over maybe some different ways that we could draw this head. Don't draw yet. Watch me. Now, most heads are oval shaped, so if you want a head lying down, draw your oval downward. If you want it straight on, draw it straight on. If you want it laying the other direction, draw it the other direction. If you want it kind of hidden under some covers, maybe just draw half of it and then you got your covers there. Next we'll work on some eye features. Now if you're sleeping, your eyes are probably going to be in this direction. Now notice that I'm drawing some ears in between the eyes and the nose because that's about where they fall and some eyebrows. And hair can be done a number of different ways. Just watch for some different ideas, um, whether you have short hair or long hair. Some other ideas for eyelids. Notice again, you, if you're sleeping, you'll want your eyelids pointed down. Um, you could draw a pointy nose. You could draw kind of a very thin shaped mouth. Again, um, you'll want to figure out where you might want those covers to go. And then you've got ears too to fill in. You might have some spiky hair. And if so, this might be what it looks like. Now this person, I'm going to draw some eyelashes on and a pointy nose and more dainty mouth. Don't forget the eyebrows and where the head is hitting the blankets. And then this one, I'm going to draw some long hair. So sky's the limit, whatever you want your hair to look like for your project. Now this one, I'm going to do something a little different with the eyes. Um, I'm going to make one of the eyes peeking out. Now don't forget, and I'm going to try some curly hair. Don't forget the ears and however the bed covers lie against the face. Okay, now that you've seen some ideas, um, let's actually put something on our paper. Okay, remember we want to choose a spot somewhere in the top portion of our paper, maybe about a hand width down, and I want to do my head tilted. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to draw the oval, and it can be a little off-centered, it can be in the center, wherever you want to put it. All right, now we need to draw some facial features. I'm going to draw my sleeping eyes, my nose, and my mouth. And you saw some various ideas of how to do it, so go ahead and choose how you want yours done. Don't forget the ears between the eyes and the nose area, and some eyebrows. Um, I'm also going to add some eyelashes onto my head, and I'm also going to add some curly hair. And you can style your hair and make your face however you would like. And don't forget, after you have made your head, you also need to figure out how am I going to make this head uh, lay on these blankets. And so draw in a blanket somewhere there. Notice I actually probably want to cut off that ear. So I'll be erasing that ear shortly. 
And then I think I want to do a ponytail for my hair. So I'm going to do a puffy ponytail up top. Now I'm going to start drawing the quilt. And so choose a spot and draw a curved line all the way down. Um, you might want to take the quilt above the head and lead it over to the side. And again, over the head, down to the side. Um, I want these more long curves um, as opposed to cut through the middle curves. Um, so make them more vertical curved lines as opposed to uh, cutting straight across horizontal lines. At this point, you might want to make it feel like your covers are coming up into your face. So you might curve some of them. So you feel free, you can erase. Remember I talked about we're going to need to erase that ear at some point. Um, make those covers feel like they're cuddling your face a bit. And notice here, this is where I erase that ear because it's not going to be showing because I am cuddling my blanket. All right, so just make some more sections. Like I said, try to make these sections more vertical and curved in nature. Um, and then until you're happy with the number of sections you've got. All right, let's get out your cup, your put some water in it, your paintbrush, you need your watercolors and a paint, uh, I'm sorry, paper towels or toilet paper of some sort. All right, let's think what colors maybe do we want in this quilt. I'm gonna give you three different examples. This one has um, most all the colors in the watercolor palette. This one does have all the colors in the watercolor palette. Um, one thing you'll notice though, it's a very muted, diluted color. And this one, I only used orange and yellow in the quilt um, with the watercolors, but I used some very vibrant and some very diluted looking. So let's go over how do we make this either really diluted or very vibrant. To start with, let's we're gonna start with the yellow. Um, you always have to wet the watercolor itself. Um, if you want it to be vibrant, you're going to be taking color directly from the palette and putting it on to the watercolor paper. Notice how vibrant this section is. Um, and I'm not gonna go back to the water cup unless I just need to add a little bit more water to that color palette. Notice how I'm only going from the color palette to the actual watercolor paper and it turns out very vibrant and deep. Now I'm gonna give you an example of the other way. Each of these times you have to wet the watercolor, but I'm going to do kind of more of a muted one where I take the color and I put it in the center of the section and then from there, I'm only going to fill in that section with water from the water cup. And you don't wanna make it um, soupy either, but every time I feel like I need some more water for this section or, or some more color to move the color around, I'm gonna get it from the water cup as opposed to from the palette itself because the color that I want is all there in the middle. And so, I'm using the water and pulling the color out from that middle section that I found. And notice how much softer this color is. Um, if you wanna soften it up even more, um, I'll show you how to do that sh as well. What I'm gonna, you can notice the difference, but you can also soften it by blotting it with that paper towel um, and it makes it even more lighter in color. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple more examples for you of each of these colors. I'm gonna do a very vibrant red, and notice I am only taking the red color from the palette and see how deep it is. Now, before you decide to do um, uh, sections that are this deep in color and so vibrant in color, you need to consider that you're going to be putting some um, markers on top of this with the patterns. And so if you make them all really deep in color, it's going to be a little bit more tricky um, when it comes to using um, the colors and the markers that you want. So you may not want to do a really dark 
vibrant section like this because you'll be limited to probably the blue or the purple um, because nothing else will really show up in these areas. Now you may notice I'm starting to get close to where I just did some painting and it's starting to bleed into there. Don't worry too much. What you can do is you can grab um, the paper towel and you can blot that area where it starts to bleed. Um, don't wipe it, but blot it and it should come off relatively easily. And so something else to consider as you are painting, um, maybe paint sections that are away from each other so it gives them time to dry. Okay, so here's that technique with more of a softer red color. You take the color and put it just in the middle and then from there, again, you're just taking the water directly from the cup out to the watercolor paper and you'll notice how it fills in the section very nicely with only the water from the cup and not continuously pulling it from that palette and it lightens up that red color quite nicely and again I'll show you if you do want to soften it even more you can take that paper towel and you can blot 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 if it's still too dark for you. Okay so in the next couple segments you're just going to be seeing me putting some various colors in these different sections and again you choose if you want them to be super vibrant um, Take the color directly from the palette if you want them to be more muted in color. Um, put the color in the middle and then use the water from the cup to uh, soften the colors. And if you want to soften it even more, you can use that paper towel. Um, it, make your plan for what colors you want to use. Um, again, remember in one of mine, I used only yellow and orange. Um, in this one, I use almost all the colors in the watercolor palette in a different one. I did use all the colors in the watercolor palette. Um, just make a plan for what you want your quilt to look like. Keep in mind again that your markers, uh, you'll want to be able to see the colors of the markers and so you don't want to make everything too vibrant because that will make it hard to see the pretty colors of the markers. Um, so go to and fill in your different sections and try to keep keep your paper from getting too, too wet um, by if you need to blot it out, you can blot it out and that helps as well. Okay, now we're going to work on the sky area or maybe you think it's wallpaper, whatever it is. The technique is you're going to wet the paper first. Don't make it too soupy wet, just get it wet and then you're going to choose whatever color you want for that background and you just dot it in there um, and you let the water that's on the paper decide where the color goes. Um, you put some dots on, but for the most part that water is deciding where the color is going on this paper. It makes it look slightly sky or cloud-like. Um, it's just a fun watercolor technique. Now I'm going to draw your attention to the yellow section on the right that's starting to have some of the sky area bleed into it. If that happens for you, just take your paper towel and blot it out and it just had a little bit too much water there. It's a pretty easy fix. Okay, at this point um, we're going to be doing the head. So if you want to paint your face a certain color, you can. Um, I'm just going to stick with leaving it completely white so that it pops out a little bit more from the quilt. I'm going to go ahead and paint the lips area and I'm going to paint my hair. Other than that, that's all I'm going to paint in this face area, but it's your choice. One thing I forgot was that I want to paint my eyebrows. At this point, we just want everything to dry, so wave your hand on it, blow on it, whatever you need to do. We need to get it so that the paint is dry so we can put the markers on. All right, inside those sections, we're going to be adding some patterns. Remember, patterns are anything repeating, so numbers repeating, shapes repeating, letters repeating, even colors repeating uh, make patterns. Here are some of the examples of some of the patterns that I filled in the sections with. You need your 
your markers, your colored markers. You also need your um, very your ultra fine point black Sharpie marker as well. Um, so make sure you get those out of your art toolkit. Um, and then let's start working on some of these sections. As you look at these examples, I want you to take note of what colors show up well in what areas. Um, obviously, most of them show up pretty well on the, the muted color quilt, but um, notice what shows up on the vibrant colors as well. Um, and choose those as you're selecting your colors. But before we select the colored markers, I want you to make sure everything is dry and grab your black marker first. And you're going to um, make sure everything's dry and then you're going to go over those pencil lines with your black marker. Um, and so go ahead and complete that for your whole quilt in all the various sections. Um, you're gonna switch to the ultra fine point marker when it comes to the facial features and such. Notice how I'm not afraid to turn my paper to make it easier for me when I'm, when I'm drawing. So don't feel like you have to leave your paper in one direction. You can move it around to make it easier for you. Also, please notice that it's at this point that I'm adding in some of the detail lines in the hair. Um, you know, we just kind of put a block of color on there before, but now I have an opportunity to actually make it look curly with that fine point marker. So whether you're making your hair look uh, straight or spiky or whatnot, that's the time when you wanna be adding the details. All right, let's do a quick review of lines. Now remember there are various straight lines such as vertical, horizontal, and diagonal lines. There's also more organic lines that are more curved in nature. I also want to do a review of shapes for you. What's interesting about shapes is that they are formed by lines. So two vertical lines and two horizontal lines can make a square or a rectangle. Two diagonal and a horizontal can make a triangle. A curved connected line can be a circle. Now the reason why I went over these and patterns is because we're going to actually use lines and shapes in making our patterns today. So I want you to choose your first color and your first section and go ahead and add in some horizontal lines. Repeating horizontal lines. Does not have to be in the same section that I chose nor the same color that I chose, but I want you in one of your sections to put repeating horizontal lines. All right, now grab a new color and a new section and I want you to make repeating curved lines. And again, it does not have to be the same color I chose nor the same section I chose. All right, time to get a new color and a new section, this time diagonal lines. And again, you don't have to make them in the same section or the same color that I chose, nor in the same diagonal slide direction that I chose. All right, now this time, new color, new section, and I want you to do spirals. You do not have to do one consecutive spiral like I do. You can do many spirals, but I'd like you to get an opportunity to do a pattern with spirals in in a section of your choice, in a color of your choice. All right, new color, new section, vertical lines. Repeating vertical lines, please. Now you might notice you can't really see that yellow on top of the yellow, so I think I'm gonna choose a different color for this particular challenge of mine. So I'm gonna go back over those vertical lines so I can actually see them. All right, now choose a new color, and this time I want you to fill in with repeating shapes. Choose a shape and repeat it in a section. Again, it doesn't have to be the same color as I chose nor the same section that I chose. All right, now I want you to choose a new color, new section, and a new shape. And this time with that new shape, I want you to color in the shape that you made. All right, new color, new shape. Again, you choose this time though, if you wanna color in the shapes. Okay, new color, new shape, new section. This time we're gonna do some symbols. Notice I did some hashtags, some X's, 
some musical notes, some hearts, um, some flowers. So this time I'm going to do maybe something kind of like a butterfly shape um, with like almost four petals like coming off of it. Like I said, I'm trying to make butterflies. You all feel free to make some symbol that you want to make in your section. All right, new color, new section. I would like you to draw a shape and I want you to outline that shape. I chose a square here or a rectangle and notice I filled in the inside one and then I outlined it. And then another thing I'm going to also work into this pattern is I'm going to make a smaller rectangle or square and I'll also outline it but this time I'll fill in that outer portion and leave the inside square open. So I want you to do something like that. It doesn't have to be with a square or a rectangle. Choose another shape but um, do some outlining of it and choose to fill in some of the insides or fill in some of the outsides. Okay, another idea. Once you've got these areas that already have some lines in it, I encourage you to choose another color and then add some embellishment in between the lines. Like in this one, I decided to put some dots in between these spiral lines. Now again, it doesn't have to be the spiral one you choose. It could be any of these line sections. Um, I want you to uh, try adding a little bit more details with some dots. All right, another idea, I grab a new color, new section, and this time I want you to try putting some diagonal lines in between um, some of the lines that you made and make that a pa another pattern um, to add some interest to these lined pattern areas. Now you can leave it like that or you know, maybe you like those dots and maybe you want to add some more dots in the new diagonal pattern section. All right, let's embellish some more. Uh, this time I'm going to make my square or shape area look a little more interesting and I'm going to put some offshoots in different directions um, in this pattern and make it a little more fun and interesting to look at. Okay, I'm going to choose another one of these shape areas. Sometimes you can make them look interesting by putting dots in the middle of a different color. So you might try that. So find another shape area and you want to do something else to make it look a little bit interesting. I'm making mine look kind of like little suns by putting some radiating lines around them. All right, now I am going to make these lines look a little more interesting by putting some squiggly lines around them. You know, do whatever you can do to make it a little bit more interesting than just lines. Even in the butterfly section, I decided, you know what? I think I want to make some leaves in there. So that's what I did. And then another idea, if you'd like, you can take the ultra fine point Sharpie marker and draw some more detailed lines in it. I'm detailing the leaves and then I'll also detail the butterfly wings. And in this other section here, notice I'm going to add in some shapes and fill them in just to make it a little bit more interesting than just curved lines. Um, and that's kind of the theme throughout all this is use the lines and the shapes to create some interesting patterns. And then once you're done with that, if you're still wanting a little bit more excitement to it, grab another color or grab the ultra fine point Sharpie and add some more details to it that way. Okay, I've got one more section that I want to make a little bit more exciting and that's this one here. So I'm going to add some symbols in here and I wanted to add in some music notes. So I chose to use my ultra fine point Sharpie on this one. All right, now we're done. Let's go ahead and put the markers away. Um, clean them all up and put them back in your art tool kit. Now make sure you go and uh, clean up your watercolor mess. 
Make sure the brush and the cup get dried really well and washed really well. And then you're going to put away your watercolors into the bag and put that in your art toolkit in addition to the dry cup. All right, now you're going to set your beautiful artwork aside and you need to fold up the brown waxy piece of paper and put it back inside your art toolkit as well. All right, and then also make sure to seal up the other portion of your art toolkit and get it back inside the larger bag. And we're done. I hope you had an enjoyable lesson.